You just get all wiggly. What's wrong with you? Are you going to be a good girl? You're going to be a good girl. Yes, you are. You're going to be. Yes, you love your mom. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to delve into part two of Is a Shichi Breed Dog Right for You? This is my own little eight month Shichi. Her name is Kaya. And we are going to use her as an example all throughout this video to help you understand their personality traits and their temperaments, both good and bad, and their activities, their alertness, their uh, intelligence, and what it's like to raise a puppy. And it's a busy job. So if you know someone who is trying to buy a Shichi and wanting to know more about them, or if it's you yourself, Please continue with this video because we're going to start right now. of this video, we reviewed the two breeds that make up a Shichi, which are a Chihuahua and a Shih Tzu mix. There are definitely ways to figure what is most common in all Chichis, which will help you decide on whether this breed is right for you. If you have missed part one, I have linked it in the description below so that you can quickly go to it when you're ready. And you'll also be able to link to it at the end of this video. Let's first look at some common health issues between both breeds. In the table I created for you, you'll see that there are four different health problems that are common to both breeds, and they're marked in green, which are dislocation of the kneecap, tracheal collapse, tooth and gum disease, and various eye problems. Both breeds have these in common. So you can reason that you will have a dog with some, if not all, of at least those problems. And of course, I'm speaking about uh, as they age. Okay, now I want to talk about shedding. Chihuahuas shed all year long, mostly in the spring and the fall, and the spring being the heaviest shedding period. And the Shih Tzu's, great for people with allergies, but you can't really say they're non-shedding because that's not accurate. Shih Tzu's are a breed who has a coat that is made up of hair like a human instead of fur. But they will shed their hair daily, just like people do, but you just don't find it gathered all over your couch upholstery or in your favorite chair. It's not going to be all over your shirt or your black pants. I can tell you from experience, I only find hairs on my person only after I have brushed her or she's just had a bath and I've brushed her. By the way, I will be referring to the description and the links I've added to the description throughout the video. So as an example, I am here uh, on a cell phone on the Cuddly Kaya channel page and I'll show you how to find the comments and how to make, um, make a comment or just see the description with all the links. You'd first find the video that you're looking at. You'll want to pause it right away. Then if you see right here, it says comments and it has a picture of you is the picture it should have. There is, this is where you can make a public comment and send it to me, uh, asking a question or just whatever you want. This is also where you can give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. However, if you want to see the description where the links are located, 
there's a little arrow right here. I don't know if you can see it, but you want to click that and scroll down. And these are the comments where I leave the links for you to find other information that we talk about. Let's move into talking about training Ashishi. I'm not a professional trainer. There are many of those on YouTube that you can watch, and I'll make a few suggestions of some that I watch and learn about training Kaya in the description below. I use positive reinforcement when I'm training my dogs. Lie down. Good girl. Sit. Okay, now you're just being silly. Lie down. Lie down. Good girl. Okay, let's talk about barking. I have to confess right here at the get-go that nothing, absolutely nothing, I have tried to stop barking has worked. I am testing something now to conquer the barking issue, and I will share what worked when I'm confident that we have the problem corrected and it really honestly worked. If any of you out there have a shichi and you have experience with getting them to stop barking, please put your ideas in the comments. Thank you. I heard a funny story this week. We live in townhomes, and I was telling my neighbor how I'm trying to conquer the barking, and she told me how another neighbor who lived near a loud barking dog bought a device that made a loud, high-pitched noise that only the dog could hear. They stopped their neighbor's dog from barking. So I have some evidence what I'm going to try might work. Kaya was get, getting into a bad habit of running the other way when I'd approach her to pick her up or to put a leash on her. She would just keep backing up as I got closer to her. It was like a game. Keep away. No, you're fighting it. Look at you fighting me. Look at you. No. I know I need to nip this behavior if I ever plan on being able to just pick her up to go get in the car or wherever I need her to be. I find that wearing a leash in the house calms her. It allows me to step on it to stop her retreat in the other direction. And she understands that I have the upper hand and she cannot go the other direction. So it stops the behavior and hopefully will create a new behavior of standing there when I go to pick her up rather than playing keep away or catch me if you can. One of my newest commands is leash up. Okay, you gonna leash up? Leash up? Good girl. Good girl, Leisha. Good girl. That's a good girl. What a smart puppy I've got. What a smart puppy I have. Yes, sir. Okay. I would advise you to roll up your rugs that have looped carpet that will unravel or plan on purchasing other new rugs after puppyhood. Kaya has managed to claw a bare spot in our dining room rug. And she delights in picking with her claws and chewing the loops in an indoor-outdoor carpet that we have in the family room. These will both need to be replaced after she grows up. What you say into mom? Sometimes, Kaya can't resist telling me something. I don't always know what it is, but she does her best to get the point across. Tell me stories. What you telling mommy? Oh. Yes, what else? You like your toy? What else you telling mommy? Hmm? What else you telling mommy? Oh. That's good. What else? What else you want to say? <coughs> what else you want to say? I want to remind you that Kaya is still a puppy at eight months old, so I think some of these behaviors might disappear as she gets older. However, I'm not sure of that, and the joy she gets from doing some of these things makes me wonder if she'll ever outgrow them.
But remember, she chees are agile and move quickly, and I have found Kaya to be like a magician. She can get out of any situation before I hardly have a chance to grab her. She can tear up a pair of sandals in a heartbeat, and she loves to chew my shoes. I had a pair of shoes out to wear to the airport the other day, and Kaya saw them, grabbed one, and started tearing the heel on it before I even knew she had it. Consequently, I didn't wear those shoes and might not ever be able to wear them again. I think this is normal puppy behavior. But I don't necessarily think all of these behaviors can be blamed on this particular breed. It goes along with her playfulness and her drive to chew all the time, which I hear doesn't magically disappear after they quit teething. You can see here one Nyla bone has been chewed quite a lot. You can't even tell the shape it once had. This is a flexible one made for younger puppies. I quickly moved to this one because she was chewing and ingesting the plastic. This is a what it is called on the packaging a power chewer. It doesn't flex and it has a much harder exterior so she only scratches the surface and doesn't ingest it. I also buy Kong toys like this one and others. This one she just enjoys playing with without any treats inside. And I like to get rope toys like this that she can play with the rope and entertain herself for quite a while. One of her favorite things to do is to chew on her chew sticks. No chew lasts very long with Kaya, but I found these satisfy her chewing instinct and she often falls asleep afterward. They're called smart bones because they don't have the rawhide in them. Kaya favors the Shih Tzu side of her genes. However, her hair does not grow as long as a Shih Tzu on top of her head or ears. I tend to thin her hair down in the summer and try to make it even. I try to give her a Shih Tzu cut on her head, but cut the hair on her neck and the top of her head with a half inch guard so her face will still stand out and look like a Shih Tzu cut. Kaya gets a bath every two weeks, but when we travel or have company, I tend to give her a bath just before our company arrives. I use a shampoo with whitening in it so her white fur is very fluffy and very white. The best whitening shampoo I have found is a wall brand. Chi Chi's are very smart and as pups they get bored easily. Right now, she's wondering why I'm not stopping her this time. What you doing? You're wondering why Mommy's letting you play that, aren't you? Because Mommy usually says, no, Kaya, no. But for some reason, Mommy's letting you play with it today. What is going on with that? Hmm? What is going on with that? get through the day with both of us smiling, a walk is the break I need from whatever I'm doing, and it's the break I take when Kaya is starting to get bored and getting into trouble. It gives each of us something else to focus on for a while, and it tends to burn some of her extra energy so she'll take a nap and let me get a few more things done when we return. I wanted to talk about travel. I have a video on my channel about traveling with your dog, specifically on a plane, but a lot of it applies to any kind of travel. 
This video was done before my little Gracie died before the channel renaming. You can still find it on this channel. Pay particular attention to the airline recommendations for size. Use an airline approved medium size or smaller bag. I have not found anything larger than a medium that works. My favorite is a snoozer. We travel by plane a lot and it never ceases to amaze me that every time I'm in the airport, somebody, if not more than one person, stops me to ask about my dog carrier. It's quite unique, it's comfortable, and it rolls and maneuvers as easy as any piece of luggage. <laughs> Airline personnel are likely to ask if your dog can stand up, turn around, and move around inside their carrier. If you're pushing the limits, the answer to that question might be no as some airlines specify 15 pounds or under. I also suggest that you have a copy of your airline's rules about in-cabin travel and have a reference as to exactly where to find it on their website. I have found lots of new employees are unfamiliar with their own airline's travel policies for animals, so they'll want to see it for themselves. And it's not worth missing your flight, so be prepared. I had high hopes for Kaya to feel comfortable in her carrier and not be anxious. I have found she is very anxious to the point of something very close to a panic attack in humans. I don't want her to be scared of flying, so I've tried several medications that I'm not happy with. I want her to be chilled out, not passed out. I want her to experience the sounds, the activity, and the hustle and bustle of the airport with all the people walking in different directions and inside the plane for takeoff and landing with the gear popping back into place as it rises without worrying or being anxious. I don't like meds that take one to two hours to work. My goal is to let her ease into the experience of travel and eventually not have to drug her at all. I'm going to try another product for our next flight and see how that works. Again, if any of you have a suggestion on what I should try, please comment and let me know what it is. I'm still looking. I have covered a lot of topics in this two video series. I hope that you give me a thumbs up if you like the video and consider subscribing. I'd also honestly appreciate if you would answer in the comments the two questions I asked in the video. And all the items that were mentioned in this video can be found under one link in the description below the video. Thanks for watching. We trust you enjoyed this video and hope you'll want to subscribe. To do that, you'll scroll down from the video to the subscribe button. When you click that, you'll be subscribed or to my left, which is a playlist with many more videos on various topics and adventures. And please visit sandyswanson.net for more information. Thanks for watching.